Hello and welcome to Sudokud. Let's dig into the events part of event-based communication in microservices. In the last video, we saw how event-based communication helps us in asynchronous communication. Now, in this video, we are going to discuss details of event-based communication. To start with, let's recap the difference between a message and an event. When two microservices have to communicate with each other, they communicate using a message broker. Message broker allows the packets of data to transfer from one service to another service. That particular piece of data that gets transferred over a message broker is called the message itself. Actually, message is the medium of communication or the transfer of data. Whereas the event itself is the payload that is sent over that message or using that message. In this scenario, the ID123 and name ABC is the event payload or the event and the whole packet of data that consists of this event which is termed as message is transferred over this message broker. When we talk about event based communication like we discussed in the previous video, we have different services and different events could be emitted from one service or multiple services and other services can be consuming those events. Now, let's take the example of these three services, orders, inventory and notifications. Order service emits an event like order placed with some item ID and the inventory service or the notification service would consume this event and try to react to it. Maybe the inventory service would again send a message back to the order saying this item is not available or it is available. The quantity is there so you can proceed with the order. However, the notification service cannot function only on the basis of this data in the event, just the item ID. Because the work of the notification service is to send emails to the customers or send any other kind of notifications to the customers about the order. This also helps us to understand how event-based communication helps in the reduction of domain-based coupling. Because you can see here, the notification service is only concerned with the responsibility of sending notifications. The inventory service is only concerned with the responsibility of managing the inventory of different items, whereas order service is only concerned with handling of an order. However, coming back to our point that what is the different kind of data that would be needed by different services in an event? Inventory would need item ID. However, notifications would need some kind of communication details like customer name or email address and so on. One way to solve that problem is send customer email and customer name in the same event. So the order service emits an event saying order is created. This is the item ID. This is the customer email and name and please emit this event or this event is emitted. When inventory is consuming this event, it doesn't need to know about the customer details. Here we are giving extra information to the inventory service which it does not need. Similarly, notification service needs that data, the customer email and name. So it is useful for the notification service. Now, the problem here is this. We are emitting only one event with a lot of data in it which might be useful to some services which are consuming the event and might not be useful to other services. If it is the case that we are okay with sharing this data with inventory service, we can use this approach. However, if there is a case that you are sharing some kind of data which you might want to hide from one service and not hide from another service or you don't want the event itself to be overloaded with data, you want to send separate events, you can do that as well. You can send two events, one with item ID and another with customer email and address. That is one approach. Another approach is this. You can use two types of communication. You can use event for inventory. You can send the item ID in the events and notification service consumes this item ID. But at the same time, it wants to get the customer details as well for this order. You might also send order ID with this. When you will ask the order service, can you please give me the customer details with respect to this order ID? It can give you the customer details back via API communication or request response based communication. This is also possible. But you can see here that in this case, there can be certain problems. Let's say that you're emitting some hundred or thousand events in a minute or in a, in a small interval of time. And if in reaction to every event, notification service or any other service is going to send an API call to the service which is emitting the event, it will be overloaded with so many API calls. 
and we do not want that so you have to weigh the pros and cons of these two approaches where you want to send all the data in the event or you want to send multiple events or you want to use a mix and match approach of events plus apis the thumb rule is that whatever data you are going to expose via apis you might as well send them in the events because anyway you are going to expose that data via apis to other services so it wouldn't harm for you to send this customer data in the event body itself so this was the event part of event based communication where you have to think about what kind of data you want to put in the event body and how you want to pass on the data across different services to consume and react to it the next part is the message broker itself there is a separate video where i have talked about different message brokers or or different ways of public communication models you can watch that video for details but here i would like to focus on just one part of message broker which is there are two types of message brokers topic based message brokers and queue based message brokers now let's see where are queue based message brokers used if you remember the request response approach that we have discussed in the previous video where one service sends a request over a queue and expects a response later on in an async manner that was request response structure that we discussed queue based message brokers is one type of implementation for that approach in queue based message brokers usually the messages are placed on queue and then one service which can be deployed over one instance or multiple instance consumes those messages now here let's say that order service has published one event okay let's say the id of this event is 1 any one host will consume this event from the queue and then this message will be removed from the queue the next message to maybe let's say is consumed by the third host and as as soon as this message is consumed it will again be removed from the queue this is a general implementation of request response approach using queue based message broker however you can also use uh, queue based message brokers for event based communication as well there is no hard and fast rule against that so this is the example of sending events over queue where you play you keep placing messages over queue and the consumers starts consuming messages as soon as one consumer consumes the messages and the message gets removed right so this pattern is also known as competing consumers out of the 3 or n number of consumers any one consumer will pick up the message from the queue and then the message will be removed from the queue so that it doesn't get consumed again what happens if any of the messages cannot be consumed we'll come to that towards the end of the video the next approach is topic based message broker in case of topic based message brokers there can be different types of topics on which one or multiple service can push on messages and there can be different consumers of different services it can be possible that inventory is only listening to topic 1 and notifications is listening to topic 1 as well as topic 2 recommendations is listening to only topic 2 in that case what would happen all the messages on topic 2 let's say message 1 message 2 these two messages on topic 2 would have to be consumed by notifications and recommendations because both of these services are listening to topic 2 so in that case what would happen there will be two copies of these two messages message 2 will go to notifications message 2 will go to recommendations same with message 1 over here now let's say that message 3 is produced on topic 1 one. one copy of message 3 will be sent to inventory and one copy of message 3 will be sent to notifications why because inventory and notifications both are listening to topic 1 but none of the copy of message 3 will be sent to recommendations because recommendations is not listening to topic 1 so this is the difference between queue based and topic based consumers you can have multiple topics and different services can subscribe to one or more of those those topics to have the messages delivered for consumption now what happens in case these messages cannot be delivered or something fails again i have discussed the problems towards the end of the video in case of queue based consumers when the messages cannot be consumed there is a concept called dead letter queue and in that case all the messages let's say that message 2 couldn't be consumed this will be removed from the main queue and it will be placed onto this dead letter queue then you can write different logic to pick up check the messages in dead letter queue from time to time and see if you want to keep it publish it again or you want to just remove it from the queue it depends on your implementation so this is how the failed messages get handled in queue based communication now talking about topic based message brokers in that case what could happen is that one you can retry the message you will keep the message if it doesn't get consumed by one of the services let's say that you have produce message on topic 1 okay 
it was supposed to be consumed by service one and service two. Now let's say that service one consumed it, but service two didn't consume it. So you need to keep it configured that this message has to be retried for service two after some time. Again, it depends on which tech you are choosing. Kafka does provides this capability where you can configure messages for up up till how long you want to keep such messages or do you want to retry. It depends what implementation you want to have for your field messages. So. the retry logic and the retention time or how many times a message is delivered all these properties are the fundamental building blocks of a message broker itself and knowledge of these topics in depth is actually required if you are going towards implementation of an event based system of course this implementation of such systems is not an easy task to do and it comes with its own set of problems as i said there can be lost messages which are published but not consumed there can be cases where the messages cannot be pub published itself what do you do in such cases maybe you have to have a retry mechanism if messages are published and not consumed again you have to check and have a retry mechanism if the same message is consumed twice then you might want to have a logic in your application to not have that that duplicacy effect on your application and data order of messages is a very big problem to solve maybe you are publishing messages in the order 1 2 3 but it is not guaranteed in many systems that they will be consumed in the same order they might be consumed in a different order it depends on the implementation how those messages are consumed usually the implementations are not able to guarantee the ordering of messages it can also happen while the messages are being published the consumer is down so the messages keep piling up some tech implementations provide you the replay features where you can just whenever your consumer is up it starts consuming all the messages and till that time you keep the messages in the in the store as well so that the replay can happen or so that the consumption can happen when the consumer is up again so as i said some of the solutions are retries replays retaining those messages or sending the same messages twice so that the system and the consistency of the data which depends on such communication can be kept intact This is just scratching the surface of event based communication. If you're interested in deeper implementation of this topic then let me know. I will try to find out time to make a hands-on video on the same. Till then take care see you in the next video.